we've got a guest with us today, and his name's Mike, and he's this specialty welder guy. And he says he wel welds conveyor belts. Now, I don't know what he's talking about, but he told me that he had to go all the way to Germany to actually go to a special school to learn how to do this type of welding. And he travels all over the United States from one end to the other. And uh, let's talk to this guy. I think it's gonna be uh, a unique story and see exactly what he does to make a living. Welcome to DIY Automotive School with my friend Pete and Minnie the Body Shop Girl. It's everything you need to know about cars and more. What's up, dude? What's hey, your folks. name, buddy? My name's Mike. How you doing, Mike? Glad now, we saw your truck here. It says Belt Technology. What's going on, guy? Yeah, from the looks of it, you probably think, uh, you know, it's an ice cream dude. Uh-huh. Actually, what we do... An ice cream truck. There yeah, you go. It's what you, uh, most people think when they see the bear. Right. Uh, but actually, I'm a specialty welder. I work in the conveyor belt industry. Conveyor belt? I thought conveyor belts were made out of rubber. Not all of them. Uh -huh. uh, most industries in the candy making industries or the baking industries, they all use uh, metal conveyor belts. Is that belts. stainless steel or aluminum? In the baking industry, it's mostly carbon steel, but in the chemical industry, it's all stainless. Really? So the carbon steel, does that rust? The carbon steel doesn't rust in the baking industry because they always keep it lubricated uh, uh -huh. with uh, the oils, you know, the food grade yeah, oils yeah. and whatnot. So when you're saying a conveyor belt made out of steel, these things are like miles long. No, uh, hundreds of feet long, but, uh, mm -hmm. and that's one thing a lot of people don't realize is when the steel gets uh, long and wide, it gets right. flexible, you know. When they're in small pieces like this, you know, you can't bend it. It's it's rock hard, right? But okay, but what imagine is seven thousand seven 700 feet long. Right, imagine like this a piece five, of paper. five feet wide and a hundred feet long. This thing gets flimsy like a Pretty piece Pretty flimsy. Of paper. So what are we looking at here? What is this? Go ahead and show us, Mike. Yeah, so what I do, I just brought a little piece out. This is one okay, mil thick. That looks thick. like, okay, it, that's two or three pieces. It's two or three pieces, that's right. Uh -huh. It's about one mil thick, and this is a proprietary material that my company calls NC12.1. So they're the only ones that have it? They are the only ones that have it. And what's it made it. out of, bud? They don't tell us. They don't, you don't even know. That's just some high-tech stainless steel metal stuff. This that, is proprietary. That we don't even want to open and touch. Well, you can touch this. This this is uh, basically for chemical resistance, you know. Okay. Uh, the finish on it and the materials that are in it, uh -huh. it's, it's to uh, provide chemical companies with uh, corrosion resistance for their product. It's right, uh, right. little pellets uh, in the sulfur industry. In the wax industry, it's little pellets. Uh -huh. But in other industries, it, it, they flood the belt, and there's a water that cools from the underside, and it solidifies the product, sometimes in a sheet. And wow. at the end, this thing curves over. Hang on, whoa, whoa, whoa. Son of a bitch. See what kind of traffic we got here, guy? Yeah, it sucks. Talk a little louder, Mike. It We're sucks, out. Pete. Okay, go ahead, bud. So anyway, when this thing comes around the drum, a scraper blade peels off their product, whatever it is, and, uh, and Bob's your uncle. But anyway, so they come to us when they want to replace belts in uh -huh. the full length. So are these patch panels? These are patch panels. Is that patch panel friend. material? I'm headed to Oklahoma right now to go help out a customer of ours that huh. has a three inch crack, Pete. A, a three repeat. inch, three a inch three crack. Inch How long crack. is the belt? The belt is about 400 feet long. Yeah. And they make rubber tires. And how wide are they? They are about five feet wide. So they're five feet wide, 400 feet long. That's right. And it's got a three inch crack. And nobody can weld it. You're That's the only the guys joke, in the Pete. world that does this stuff. I'm about, there's five. There's five technicians like me. Yeah, that work United for this States. company right here. In the United States, that's right. And five. you went all the way to Germany to learn how to do this? 
every year, once a year, and to get certified or the what? Past five years. Huh. Yeah, it's ongoing training. I've been to Austria five times already. Yeah, dude. I'll probably go again next year. So tell us some. Okay, let, what are you? What kind of welding are you getting? MIG welding, arc welding, what? Step right over here, my friend. I'll okay, show you. Okay, let's see what we got. Right here, you have the Miller Max Star 200. This little baby. Will, That's it. This will provide all the heat. Now this looks like a cracker box welder, but this guy. This will provide all the heat that you need huh. to get done. For a TIG welder. To get it done. That's so is that like an amp or what? Is that, is that just your power supply? Or is that actually the welder itself? I'll show you what we use. We use this little thing. Uh, it's also called a rheostat. Uh -huh. Or uh, I call it a rheostat. So we're going to call it a rheostat right now. Okay, now what is a rheostat? What does that mean? This means you can turn your heat up and down. It, Pipeliners, uh, they have a ditch box, okay. and it's also a rheostat. So that's basically a switch. Uh, it's, a, uh, it's a rheostat to turn it up and down, higher amps, lower amps. Okay, okay. So on, on a MIG welder, that's built into the MIG welder. That's one of the knobs that you turn. On a MIG welder, yeah, you walk over and you turn right, the rheostat right. okay. up okay. and down. Okay, this so that's just a portable one, let's just say. Well, this provides the, all the control that we need to make precise uh, perfect welds. Accurate. Accurate welds. Every time we use a pencil torch, huh. and I put this little dealy bob right there, and I hold it with my hand here, so I can wow. I can use my wire. So you're basically controlling that and that all at the same time. Yeah, you're. Uh, it takes some skill. It takes considerable skill, just like your work that you do, your body work that you do, uh, other skilled. Uh, trades you know we have skills too and, this and that's is, called a pencil torch huh? this is a pencil torch huh. by Miller of course your tungsten's here always keep that nice and sharp uh, I use 045 MIG wire uh, I, that's the size that I could uh, tell you 045, 045 wire because I'm using uh, 022 yeah yeah right. so small stuff so the 045 is smaller it is uh, 0 0.045 yeah okay it's, wow it's, it's like MIG maybe wire. MIG welder ain't the same as TIG wire. Yeah, well, because uh, the O22 I use is pretty thin. Some of it's flux cord, but yeah. ours is solid. Okay, there you go. You know, you don't want any. So of that you're flux you're cord. using a like a rod. You're not using a wheel like a, a MIG welder. No, sir. Yeah, I'm actually having to use my dexterity. Use uh -huh. my left hand to feed the wire. Yeah, and, use and then my you got. Right. And then what are you using? A foot pedal for, to turn it off and on, or? No, no, that's the that's the hand switch. That's that it. I showed you. That's it. Oh, that's it right there. So it's it's DC welding, right? Jeez. But reverse polarity. So you're not even using gas. Yes, we're using argon. Okay. Yep, yeah, yeah, that feeds through here. I have a, I carry my flow meters, and the company they huh. provide the argon. I jack into their argon. And uh, off we go. Now let me ask you this: If someone wanted to buy a little unit like that for a home hobby operation, how much does something like that cost? Uh, I think you can check their website, but they usually range from around twenty-five hundred to thirty-five hundred. Yeah, dude. Yeah. So well, if you were a hobby guy though, and you wanted to TIG weld, would you really need a unit like that? You think that unit would really be, you know, an overkill? No, not overkill. That little unit you could hook up with a, a, a separate MIG unit. Uh huh. You could do TIG, you could do MIG, you could really? do stick. Yeah, it's all all. So of that it. unit's pretty much basically everything and anything all in yeah. one. So for a three thousand, you can do stick welding with that. Yes, sir. With the right uh, adapters. You don't even need an ad adapter. Actually, it's just the setting. Jeez. You change it to stick. Oh, there it is, right there. Hi. Huh. You got a high freak for aluminum. Bump it down here for DC TIG, and boom, you're on stick. Wow. Now you have to reverse your polarity down here for Heliarc, but other than that, yeah, this little this little thing is a, a jam up little box machine. Show us some of your specialty tools here, dude. Okay. I see a lot of equipment going on. Here. As we were talking a minute ago, some of these belts are five feet wide. Well, fitting this thing up and getting a precise precision weld, it's difficult. So right, right. we have a jig or a fixture, right? Mm -hmm. And this is a proprietary jig that we use. That means you're the only ones in the world that even yeah, have it. Probably shouldn't even be showing this on camera, but we're doing it for my <laughs> Gee, thanks Pete. a lot, buddy. We're doing it for all, all the right. cool viewers. You aren't going to get in trouble, are you? I don't know. Let's just hope all the viewers out there and, appreciate uh, it. Appreciate okay. what I'm showing you. All this right. is a skilled tradesman to another skilled tradesman. There you go, buddy. We fit it up in here. We use air pressure. There's some there's some air fittings on the other side uh -huh. that cause these fingers to shove down, right? Yeah. And that gets us our fit, Pete. But right. 
Remember that file I gave you? Right. We have to file that dude and go across with a feeler gauge. Oh God. Get this, our gap has to be around four thousandths or less. So if I come across that thing with a feeler gauge and boom, it drops in, no good. Got to wow. take it out of the fixture, file it again, put it back in the fixture. And you're talking five feet wide. Five feet wide. Jesus. That's right, that's right. Until I can get a feeler gauge to go across that thing, a five thousandths feeler gauge does not fall in, then we're good to go. Yeah, dude. Then I can set my robot, you know what this is, it's a bugo. I don't know. I've never heard of one. What's never that? heard of one. It's a creepy crawler, dude. What is that, dude? We That's have a, a welder? Nope, nope. We have a track right here uh -huh. that bolts on to the fixture. Okay. Okay. And we set our robot creepy crawler up the there. The bugo. And we bolt on that torch that I showed you. Yeah. And this guy, I can control it faster, slower. Oh, yeah. It's an auto welder. Up and down, left and right. Jesus. Faster, slower. We have certain parameters that we go by and certain parameters that I like and I use. Uh -huh. So this thing crawls across there around while it's welding. While it's welding and I have to control it. So you're so you're not even hand welding at this time. Not for the cross welds. Uh -huh. Now I'm going up here to Oklahoma to do a three inch crack. Now that'll be by hand. And I'll have three to paint crack. it. I'll have to paint it just like you do body really? work or fender work. I'll have to paint that Hammer guy. And dolly that baby. And sand it out nice and smooth. When I get done, you can't even tell I was there. So you're talking a three inch crack. How long does that take from start to finish and, and, and make it flawlessly perfect? Well, you never know it's there. About three to four hours, depending three on the crack. Three or four hours, just a little crack. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. So when you're doing a whole uh, belt from one end to the other, it's five or six feet long. You're using this baby right here. Yeah, for accuracy. Wow. It's got to be accurate. And how does that thing actually crawl? Has it got wheels or something underneath? Or? Gear driven, buddy. Oh my god, dude. Gear driven. Oh, okay. And then Gear it driven. slides up on this track here. That's right. Which is proprietary. And here's where the little wheels slide in. I see that. That's right. Okay. Here's some of the thicker material we weld. So they're not all super Jesus, thin. Jesus, dude. That's for the wood industry, Pete. That's for OSB plywood. Yeah. Now, how, how thick is that? That looks like almost an eighth of an inch. Two and a half mil. Man, that's like super thick stuff, yeah, dude. I was, yeah. I'm amazed. Yeah. And then how wide would that be? Ten feet wide, Pete. That's ten feet wide and like 200, 300 feet long. Yeah, we have to weld about 100 amps using some flux for deep penetration. Jesus. And, and the fixtures we have to have flown in or trucked in by 18 wheelers. You can't be hauling them with this thing, huh? No, sir. And it yeah, takes a dude. crane company to get that belt into position. A crane company. Now, where is that located? Up in the, uh, like up in West Virginia? Or? I can't tell you. Is that place like in the mountains somewhere since it's wood related? Oh, uh, the wood press plants, they're everywhere. Really? Yeah, Canada. Uh, so you go Texas. all over Canada and Me you yes, go to Mexico? Sir. Not Mexico. We have a technician there, mostly Canada and U.S. God, yeah. dude. It's crazy. So huh? this is patch material here. That's just patch, a little straight edge, actually, yeah. so I can get a nice straight stride. That's all that's for? Yeah, like a cut and reweld. I'd Clamp Jeez. it up there using Bessie clamp. So, so that's all it takes is the tools you got, but it's a very, very intense job to do what you do. It's a niche type skill, trade type thing that yeah. uh, if you don't have a college degree, there, the trades industry is wide open to anybody with a stinger and a welding hood. Huh. And I came by here, I've started watching your videos a long time ago. Yeah, but I ain't got nothing to do with this type of work. Pete, but you do. Oh, but you do, buddy. Why is that? Because you're a body man. Right. And a body man knows how to use his hammers. He knows how to move the metal. He knows how to to talk to metal. You you can talk to metal like I can talk to metal. We speak the same language. Oh, okay, I see what you're saying. But anyway, right. if anybody's listening out there, if I can say anything to anybody and have them listen, it'd be this. Get out there. There's no excuse for not having a job. Get her done. Anybody can get out there with a, a bucket, a welding hood, and a stinger and go find work. I mean, Fake look it. at you. You're a specialist, dude. Fake it till you make it. You're a it. specialist. You're, you're like, you're like without the, the company, without you, they'd be lost. I'm telling you, people, listen to me. Uh, five, six years ago, I didn't, I didn't have anything that I have now. Really? I didn't, I didn't know anything. I was sitting on the couch odd jobs bouncing around like some of these clown hats that come in here <laughs> yeah but, but i woke up and, and i got an opportunity to go and, and be a structure a structural welder on this little job there i had to lie to the guy i told him I, I, yeah i know how to weld i go shit. out there i didn't know shit. i was poking around he said look look 
and this guy. I, now, he, is this the company you're working for? No, or something? no, no. Okay. no. This, is, this is way back in history. But yeah. uh, anyway, the guy said, look, I'll show you one time. And that from that man doing that, showing me a skill, you know, uh, it meant something. I took that skill and I welded. You woke up. I woke up, Pete. I woke up. <laughs> I welded that job, went to the next, went to the next. If I didn't know how to do something, I learned how. Well, now look at you, dude. You're traveling all over the United States and Canada and, and, and fixing problems for people that need problems fixed. But if anybody can do it, you can. I can. If I no, can the do guy watching. The can. guy watching can. Anybody, right. any, right. any of you guys out there that can, can do it. That's the way. So what do we got over here, Mike? What's going on? What's this tool here? That looks kind of like a caulking gun or something. What is that? This is some adhesive glue. Okay, why I would you use, use that if you're welding though? Well, all these belts, they have to have some sort of tracking system on there. Okay. And what we use is this material here. It's called V-Rope. Huh. Okay. Yeah, look how thick that is. Jesus. So you glue that to the metal. I glue that out to the edge about two or three millimeters off the edge of the really? belt. Really? Yep. And, and it, it stays on there. It, it never goes off. Never, never comes goes off. off. It's some strong glue. So that's some super duty glue that you and me will never be able to get a hold of to use for our personal use. That's right. In case maybe our old lady talks too much, we might want to glue her mouth shut. <laughs> that, that glue's out of the question. Is that what you're saying? It would work. Okay. But I, I can't tell you. you what's in it because it's all because in German. Because it's all in German and it's top secret, dude. <laughs> Why you got an anvil in here? What's that for, Mike? Because we are metal masters. Hammer and dolly. You never know when you might need a little mini anvil. Right. Now, do you have special hammers or do you just use body hammers or what kind of hammers do you use when you're plenishing? Yeah, uh, special hammers, body hammers. You got any of those we can look at or we don't have any today on the way to Oklahoma to fix that? I've got one. Uh, give me one second. Okay, you want to wait here. Okay, we're going to wait here, bud. So this is an example of a guy that got off his ass and did something with his life and also is very proud of what he's doing. He's like his own boss, he's out there in the world and he's doing it uh, by himself but actually representing a very large worldwide company while he's at it. So he's basically saying if he can do it, you can do it. Um, we're waiting on a couple of hammers here because he said he actually hammers and dollies this stuff just like if you were doing body work. Uh, let's see what he's got. So okay, these, what do you got, bud? These are a couple of the hand tools, the specialty equipment that we use. Uh huh. This is a special file. This is, uh, you might have seen this before, it's an auto body file. Um, we use it in our industry. Remember, I was telling you about the fit, right. getting this thing up in the fixture and having it accurate. Mm -hmm. uh, I have to go along the edge of that belt Whoa. edge and file thousandths of an inch off. To get this thing to come together to make that four thousand. And that's the file scale. you're using, hand. And this is a hand file that we use. It's a metal use. file. That's uh, right. Body shop metal file. Body shop metal file. But in our industry, it's a lifesaver because this this could mean a, a bad weld or a good weld right here, Whoa. knowing how to use this really? this tool here. That's pretty awesome. When we're in the finishing phase. After we're, this? after we're doing hammering and things like that, we're, mm -hmm. we're getting to where we're polishing the weld off. We come along with the, a hairline gauge. This is accurate down to the, Whoa. I mean, micro nanometers, Jesus. Uh, millimeters. This is accurate flat, right? So this is a truly flat surface here. Huh. So when we set this across our weld, we don't want any kind of dip or deviation. We want to be able to set this across one, one side of the belt to the other and the welds running right down the middle. 
And you we can't feel nothing. We can't feel anything, and there's no deviation in flatness. So it takes that's a lot of precise action, Mike. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Well, I'm glad you shared all that with us, and uh, good luck with your job. You sound like you're proud of what you do, and you did get off your ass and finally did something with your life, and keep up the good work. When are you going to Germany next, bud? Uh, probably next year in June. Thank you. Now, do you get to take you. your family when you go on that? Or? Mama won't fly, Pete. She won't go. <laughs> no. <laughs> but she'll be here with now. Tell everybody what you got. You got a 1963 Volkswagen. I do. I came by to see Pete about a 63 Volkswagen Beetle. Um, I, and I, you're restoring it. I'm restoring it. It's going to be a lot of fun. I came by and asked Pete about uh, some headliner issues right, right. And, and things like that in the engine. So we're going to come see my okay. Pete, uh, my friend Pete, about the, the Volkswagen. All right, buddy. And we'll probably get some videos of that when you come over here. We'll see you later, Mike. Take it easy, buddy. Thank bud. you, Pete. Thank okay. You. Good luck with your job out in uh, Oklahoma. All right, see you, Pete. All right, buddy. Thanks a lot. So there you go, a situation that says he's going to get her done. Do it right, do it right, because if it ain't done right, he ain't going to finish the job sloppy. This is Pete, my friend Pete, your friend Pete. Meeting people, talking to people, and hopefully putting a message out there that's telling you, the viewer, you are not a loser. Get off your ass and do it. And put your hands to work to make your mind work, to make your body work, to make yourself say, I'm fucking somebody in life. See you later. watching DIY Automotive School. Classes don't stop till you know everything.